Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. If you don't know me, I'm Garnet, a gameplay programmer from Sydney, Australia. By the end of this video, you will have implemented a wave function collapse algorithm like what you see in the background here into your very own Unity project. So let's jump into it. If you don't know what wave function collapse is, there are plenty of resources online that will provide a more in-depth explanation to what I'm about to give, and I'll link a few in the description, so feel free to navigate there to fully understand it. But in this context, we will be using it to procedurally generate maps to our own specifications. Now, the great thing about this algorithm is that it's not specific to 2D top-down or side-scrollers, but can be easily expanded into 3D games as well. For this example, I will be working on a 2D project, but it won't take much to adapt this to 3D, so that would be a great challenge for you guys to take on if you wanted. But if there is some demand to see this tutorial in 3D, let me know and I'll work on that too. As always, the code from this project will be available through my GitHub page, which I will show towards the end of this video. Let's start with a brief overview of what we'll be implementing. Now, I will try to avoid the terminology that is used within this algorithm as it does come from quantum mechanics and the words can be a bit complicated. So, we will have a list of tiles. There's no specific order in which these tiles need to be created, but say they look like this. You can create any tiles that fit your game. For, for this example, I will be using these five here. This is what we will use to make up the eventual map. We will then define an empty grid. For every position within this grid, we will say that it could be any tile. Now there are ways to be more specific with which positions could be which types of tiles. For example, defining this corner to only be these three. But for the purpose of this video, I will treat every position equally. Again, feel free to play around with the algorithm yourself to get the outcome that you want. So we have the grid set up and we have the individual's tiles set up, but we need to define some rules for these tiles. This is so that while the algorithm is running, the correct tiles are being updated. Now this is a step that we're gonna need to do for each of our tiles. And I will preface this by saying that although we will be doing the step manually, it is encouraged from the algorithm to actually calculate it through code. This is because the algorithm can get quite complex and by doing it manually, we might make a few mistakes with what are real connections and what aren't. But again, for this tutorial, we will keep everything extremely simple. If you do come across an error, most likely just check what types of connections you are making. So take the blank tile. This tile will have a list of up, right, down, and left neighbors. And the way to visualize this is by referring back to our empty grid. Imagine we have selected a random position somewhere in the middle. We want to take a look at the adjacent squares and determine what types of tiles can be there. So by looking at this tile, let's determine what can be above it. We know that another blank tile is possible. How about this vertical line? It doesn't really look like it. And that's because since the blank tile is already defined, there's no possible connections for the vertical line to go into. The horizontal line here would be fine because there aren't any connections that go into it. Another way to look at this is by looking at the two pieces and comparing these edges. So you can see these two have matching edges and so you know that they could be paired, whereas this piece, the edges don't match. That being said though, the way you lay out the connections is completely up to you. For paths, it might make sense that the edges match, but for something like, say sand connecting to water, you might choose to just connect them like this. But I think a more common approach would be to actually have an in-between tile, which is a combination of both that acts as the middle ground between them. Anyway, let's continue. This sideways T piece. Using the visualization technique we just used, we see that their edges aren't a match, so we know that they can't be neighbors. And finally, this reverse L piece. We know it to be a safe piece, so we can set it as a neighbor. Visually, these would be the possible up pieces of the blank tile. Now back in our list, we would set this up, and since we did it manually, it would be more of a drag and drop of the prefabs into the up neighbor list. Now we will do the same thing for our right neighbors, our down neighbors, and our left neighbors, which will end up looking like this. So you'll see in a second why it's a good idea to have a programmatic solution to this, as you will need to define every neighbor, every adjacency, for every tile. And if you have a map that uses a lot of tile variations, this can get extremely tedious and difficult to keep track of. But let's move on and pretend that we did that and go back to our original grid. So with our original tile selected, the neighboring tiles will get updated based on the neighbors list and what's called their entropy is lowered and the original position becomes collapsed, which is a word you'll hear me use a lot. This in context means that the position has been filled. 
Now we can take it a step further in the algorithm and based on the neighbors that get updated, further update the neighbors neighbors. But as I have mentioned, we are keeping this simple and our way will achieve the same results regardless. So now we have our main position selected, we will look for the position with the lowest entropy. And this essentially means whichever position has the least amount of tile possibilities. If there's an equal chance between two positions, then it will just randomly select between them. So in this case, let's say the horizontal tile gets selected below. Then once again, the neighboring tiles will be updated if they haven't yet been collapsed, which is something that we will be continually checking for. This will then run continuously until every position has collapsed and we will have our successfully run wave function collapse. Now that we have the theory part out of the way, let's jump into our Unity project and start coding. All right, welcome back everybody. I've just imported some sprites here. Um, make sure you just feel free to use whichever sprites you're you know, using for your projects and everything. Um, and import them correctly if you need to split them up or anything just make sure you do that and with each of our sprites We will be making a prefab instance of them if you don't know how to do that You can literally just grab the sprite like the raw sprite image you either drag it into your hierarchy or you can drag it straight into your scene view Once your once that's happened, you'll see a little icon inside of the hierarchy uh, That would be our actual sprite object now we can drag that into our project folder and just drag it straight like that and we've created a prefab of that that's so that we can reuse them as they come across okay so next thing that we'll be doing is we'll be creating our first script so there's three scripts that we'll be using for this project tile cell and wave function and the first script that we're going to be using is the tile script so this is as we explained inside of the uh, presentation uh, represents the individual tile itself and it has four different arrays for each of the neighbors that we will populate ourselves now opening up our unity project again with each of our tile objects selected or you can do it individually you want to add component and you want to add in the tile script okay now once the tiles get added by default, all of the neighbors are gonna be completely empty and it's gonna be our job to populate them with the correct with the correct neighbors. So you can do that by hitting the little plus sign for each neighbor. Let's say we're using the blank path, hit plus sign, and you wanna drag in the relevant neighbor piece that is allowed to go there. Okay, this is essentially like what piece you would expect to be possible above a blank path. Okay, and you want to do that for the right neighbors, for the down neighbors, and for the left neighbors. And you want to make sure that you fill this out for all of your tile instances. Okay, once we've done that, we will create a, or we'll open up our new script called cell, and we will have these variables in it. So collapsed. Uh, refers to the individual cell if it's been collapsed or not that is essentially just has there been a tile placed and we will also have a tile array here called tile options and this is what gets updated over time as the algorithm goes on um, and by default this is completely packed it's got every tile uh, variation but as tiles get placed these options get limited depending on the orientation of the tile itself now we'll also have two pseudo constructors here and I call them pseudo constructors because I can tr you can treat this class like an actual sort of object and we want to be able to populate the object itself. Okay, so we'll give it a default state and we'll also give it uh, an array of tiles here. Okay, and we want to set our private variables here collapsed or our local variables rather collapsed to the collapse state and our tile options to the tiles that get passed through. Okay, and we'll see where that's created in just a second. Okay, so back inside of our Unity project, you want to hit create empty. Uh, we want to create a new empty game object, and this will be our cell. Okay, inside of cell, I find it easier to give it a little icon as well, so you can do that just by the little box up here. And you want to add component and add the cell class that we've just created. Okay. Once we've done that, we don't need to add anything into the cell uh, 
class inside of the inspector here, but you do want to make sure that you drag the cell object into the prefabs folder as well and leave it like that. Okay, perfect. And you can delete the original cell from the scene as long as we've got the prefab uh, variation of it. So opening up our script again, we'll be working inside of the wave function script now. So there's a couple variables at the top here and I'll quickly go through them. So dimensions is our map dimensions. The tile array here called tile objects is a reference to all of our tile objects that we've created as well. It's the tile prefabs. Our list of cell that we've called grid components is if you remember from the presentation, we had the completely empty grid. Every like grid position is our cell and that would be our list here. And then we also have a reference to each individual cell or we've got a reference to an individual cell which will populate inside of the cell that's called our cell object. So if we open up our Unity project again, and if you right click and create a new empty game object, we'll call this one map generator. Now inside of our map generator object, we'll drag in the wave function script or you can add it through the, comp the component at the bottom here. And the things we wanna look for, we wanna add the dimensions. We wanna make sure it's anything other than zero. Otherwise we don't have a map to generate. Tile objects is what we'll be populating with the different tile prefabs that we created. Anything that has the tile, tile class inside of it. Grid components, we can leave empty. And our cell object, similarly to the tile uh, prefabs here, it's anything that has the cell object attached to it, which is our cell prefab. Okay, I'll quickly run through each uh, method and what it's sort of doing. So, awake we are calling or we're creating a new grid component and we're calling our first method which is initialize grid now the initialize grid method just here is creating each cell okay and for each cell it's giving them a default state which is a default collapse state which will be false and we are giving them an instance of these tile objects so it's going to be a reference to this entire array here okay so then we will be starting our uh, coroutine check for the check entropy. And what this method here is doing is it's getting a new uh, version of the list and it's going to sort it. It's, it's essentially a quick sorting algorithm to find the cell position that has the least amount of options. Now, during the first iteration, obviously every cell will be treated equally. But once we actually start removing uh, tile options from each cell position, this is where this will be useful, okay? After that, we are gonna collapse the cell. Now, this is where the first cell gets placed. Once, uh, what we're doing here is we're getting a reference to our temp grid that we created because we want the organized list because we always wanna get from the first position. Um, and then we are going to collapse the cell all right once we've collapsed the cell we'll get the tile options that's attached to it attached to that individual cell and find a cell uh, find a tile from it and that's when we'll be instantiating here the tile itself now our final sort of method here is update generation but before we get into that one we do have another method at the bottom here which is check validity so we'll make sure that we write this because this will be relevant to the uh update generation method that we're about to create so this is comparing two different lists of tiles here and once we're doing each check inside of the generation method we want to compare the tiles and see if they are possible to be in that position and if they are or if they're not then we want to make sure that it's removed Okay, so update generation, we wanna have a new list of cell objects again, and we're gonna loop through our grid once more. So this is a quick way to find the index, uh, this little line here on 93. And if the cell is already collapsed, then we do not need to change it. Um, we don't need to update anything about that individual cell. Otherwise, if it's not, then this is where the main method starts. 
So list of tile options here is a reference to essentially the tile objects here, but we're doing it inside of a list rather than an array. And that's just because of, uh, I think Unity's like system uh, and how it sort of finds indexes through that. It's just easier to do it through a list. So we'll, all the methods here, there's actually only one real difference between them. Well, sort of two. There's what it's uh, finding inside of the cell position. So in uh, the up cell, it's this here. And inside of our valid check here, we're looking for different neighbors. Okay. So this first check here is looking for the up neighbors. Okay, then it's going to call the check validity method and it'll continue. If it's updating the right tiles, once again, it's a different check inside of the grid components, similar to here. Um, but basically, that's just finding an index. It's finding an item within the grid components array or grid components list, sorry. Then afterwards so we've got our reference to our new cell um it's looking through the left neighbors here inside of the down one it's getting the again looking through the list um and finding an index and now we're looking at the down neighbors and left slightly different here we're looking at the right neighbors Okay, once we have done all those checks, and like I said, every method or every sort of like little chunk here is exactly the same, except for how we're finding the index. We want to create a new tile array because, like I said, we were doing it in a list and converting the list from an array. Now we want to get an array and convert it from a list. So we'll loop through each list item that we've had and create and make sure that the uh, array at that position is equal to the list at that position. And then we're gonna call the new generation cell at the current index and recreate the cell, which was our sort of pseudo constructor again. And we wanna update the tile options list that is associated with it. Now, finally, we will do uh, make sure that our grid components are sort of universal list is equal to the new generation cell that we've just found, that we've just looped through completely. We want to increase our iterations count. And if iterations is less than our dimensions multiplied by our dimensions, which is essentially our width times our height, we want to start the entropy check again. Now, if we add that all together and we run the program, we can see that we get a running wave function collapse. Now, I hope this tutorial was somewhat easy to understand. Like I said, there is a uh, link to the GitHub project uh, below inside of the description. If you don't know how to navigate that, I'll show it to you just one second. So the link should bring you to a page that looks similar to this. Now, what you can do is you can either fork the repository yourself and add it into your own uh, version control or if you want to just copy the scripts directly, you can go assets, scripts, and look through the CS files. And that's what we'll be copying. And you can copy that straight into your own um, editor. All right, I hope this video was insightful. I hope you guys learned something. Any other videos you want to see me do in the future, any tutorials or anything, do let me know. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care.